And a good Wednesday to you. The Seattle Kraken's game yesterday at Climate Pledge Arena was a game of many firsts. It was the first game of the NHL season. It was the first game under new head coach Dan Bilesma. It was also the first time a female has been an assistant coach behind the bench in the NHL. Jessica Campbell became the first to do so for the Kraken yesterday. As far as the game went, well, Seattle fell 3-2 despite holding a two-goal lead at one point. Post game was full of lament about the opener not going the way they wanted to by Vince Dunn and captain Jordan Eberle. I mean, there's a lot to learn from every game. Um, I think having the gap between the next few games here, um, we got to look back and see where we went wrong. Um, there was a lot of good tonight. It, it's even hard for me to say that uh, losing 3-2 when you're up by two. So um, first one's out of the way. We got 81 more opportunities to play well. Um, and there's no doubt my mind will bounce back from this one. Obviously pretty honored to be a captain in this league. It's, it's pretty special. So um, you know, I like to think that our group, we have a lot of good leaders. I mean, we've done it for years. We've got a lot of guys who've got cups guys who have playoff experience and uh, you know to be a part of this group is, is special and, be, and to be named it I mean my family and I we love this city we love uh, you know the the culture here and, and that's a big part of why we wanted to be here so um, you know tonight was special obviously not the result we wanted um, I saw a lot of good I saw a sleepy four minutes but um, you know I think that uh, you know all, all in all it was you know I thought we played a pretty good you know 56 minutes and then uh, four minutes killed us. Dan, aside from the result of the game, you're, you're standing there next to Jessica and during pregame intros. I'm wondering what you were thinking as she was introduced and got the reaction that she did. I was waiting to see if my react the reaction to me was going to be as loud. <laughs> it wasn't. Um, I just, uh, you know, I think uh, there are moments in as we start the season for all of us that are first and you know abs being a captain i think it's a uh, uh, it's long overdue it's uh you know great to see him step on the ice as a captain for our team you know shane wright he's got a journey and he's stepping on the ice for you know now presenting himself as a full-time nhl it's great for him and you know i don't think it can be overlooked it's jessica campbell being a a coach, a, a female coach in the National Hockey League for the first time. It's great, great for her, great for the game. Seattle has some time off before they head to Minnesota to tick on the Wild Saturday at 5 o'clock. And I was in air yesterday saying the games are not available unless they're broadcast nationally other than online. Kong TV out of Seattle will be broadcasting Saturday's game and many other cracking games this season. Local tell subscribers, that's Channel 2. Well, the Seahawks continue their short turnaround week to host the 49ers tomorrow night on Thursday night football. Seattle comes into the game having lost two straight, while San Francisco has lost two of three. Coach Mike McDonald was informed several 49er players are considering tomorrow night's game a must win. He says, well, the way he looks at it, they're all must win. I, I thought the guys did a tremendous job. Uh, they deserve a lot of credit. We've had a lot of, we've had a couple of spirited uh, walkthrough type workouts, practices, mesh of all the above. And when we're ready to go, you know, we'll, we'll meet again briefly tomorrow morning and then and off we go. Every game's a must win. <laughs> That's our mentality. Every practice is a must must win practice. And then anytime you can go, you know, tee it up for real. There's always a sense of urgency to, you know, to do, do whatever it takes to win the game. I understand their position, but we're, we're in a similar one as well. Again, it's early in the season, but uh, every game is critically important. Going back to last Sunday's loss against the Giants, offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb is taking the blame for the offensive imbalance, saying Seattle needs to run the ball more. Got to get the ball to Ken more. And I think we had plenty of run game in the plan. Um, didn't have anything to do with not having enough calls for that, just didn't get called. And for us, you know, we, we leaned on the wrong thing. And I think if we, we get Ken 10 more touches, 15 more touches, things are going to look different. So that's 100% that's on me. And, my job is to make sure I get all our guys in the best position possible to win the game, and I didn't do that. DK Metcalf has had two crucial fumbles during Seattle's drives the past two weeks. Grubb was asked if that's been an emphasis in practice. DK knows all things to do. He, he certainly does, and, and ball security does mean something to him. He, 
he practices it in practice, and it wasn't like the ball was flying out loose right there. I think one of the things with a guy like DK is he is a person that, that struggles for that extra yard, and he fights very, very hard to get that, which only prolongs the opportunity for the ball to come out, and he's in a really vulnerable position where a lot of players are coming in and take shots, and he knows that, um, so he knows he's at risk of that. But, I mean, he typically – does a pretty good job in traffic, of locking the wrist and tightening it up. And, you know, that, that's not something you have to overcoach. You see it in practice, you know, right away that, that he's really trying to, to focus on those things. The Seahawks and Niners kick off tomorrow at 515 at Lumen Field. The only way to watch the game is on Amazon Prime Video. It is not available on television. There was plenty of prep soccer around the region last night. The uh, Prosser Mustangs, Blank Quincy and Seawack play 3-0. Alfredo also came up short in its game against Sela, falling to the Vikings 6-0. Cashmere pitched another shutout in SCAC play, downing Waluk 7-0. Cascade dominated OMAC and CTL play 5-1. Tadaskit stopped Chelan 1-0. Okanagan got by Brewster 3-2. Lake Roosevelt rolled Oroville 9-2. Bridgeport beat Liberty Bell 2-1. Pateras stopped Manson by final of four nothing. It's been since the Sundome Volleyball Festival that Wenatchee has lost a set, but it happened again last night on the road in Western Washington. The Panthers still came out on top 3-1 in a victory at Lake Stevens. Fred has swept Quincy in three sets. Cashmere also a three-set winner over Waluk. That was for the larger schools. For the small schools last night, Okanagan overcame Lake Roosevelt 3-1. Omak took care of Tenasket 3-zip. Brewster beat Bridgeport 3-0. Patera swept Thorpe in three sets. Any at ease by Easton 3-zip. So Blake stopped Garden City Academy 3-0. And Waterville Mansfield came out in a classic uh, top Moses Lake Christian 3 sets to 2. While the 4-1 East Mall Wildcats host the 1-4 Eisenhower Cadets in Big 9 football on Friday night to Wildcats Stadium. And NCW Live Channel will be there to televise it. Join yours truly and Grant Olson for the pregame at 6-30. Kickoff set for 7 o'clock. Also East Mall's homecoming. So hang around during halftime for the pageantry of the announcement of the 2024 Royal Court for Eastmont High School. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Have a happy Wednesday.